Hello there, it's Wednesday the 28th of November 2012. Welcome along, Chris Reardon's United Kingdom Talk. And I start off today with sad news that I know you've already heard. Uh, one of my favourite actors of all time, Larry Hagman, uh, died last Friday. Uh, star of uh, Dallas, various films, and of course... Um, the I Dream of Genie series. Do you remember that? I loved it. We loved I Dream of Genie. I was surprised to um, find out that they didn't actually record many of those. Was there only a couple of series of those or something? They seemed to have been around for a very long time. Perhaps they just kept repeating them. But uh, I certainly remember uh, I Dream of Genie on the uh, television as a child. And they say still repeat it now and again. I think you probably see it wherever you are. Fantastic. But um, Dallas. Dallas is the one for me. And... Uh, I was introduced to Dallas, believe it or not, by um, uh, my my uh, my um, uh, a girlfriend later on who I married. We were only stayed married for a very short period of time; just didn't work out. Um, but uh, it was actually my uh, ex-wife who who introduced me to Dallas when, when we were boyfriend and girlfriend. I, mean, I didn't didn't think much of it at all. But as soon as I started watching it, I was hooked in there, and uh, watched it for the entire run when it was on in the eighties. Um, and uh, did it go into the 90s on? I can't remember now. I don't think it did, did it? It was most of the 80s, perhaps early 90s. I can't remember. Um, but fantastic. And of course, on the rerun, when it was brought back again just this year, and we've just uh, finished seeing the whole of the new series of Dallas on uh, Channel 5. That's just recently finished. And now we find out um, Larry Hagman has died. And it's very, very sad, really. Um, I'm sad. It's one of those people in your life that... <clears throat> although not family, means something to you. Uh, for me, Michael Jackson was another one. He, when he died, I, I felt felt it. Uh, not so much um, Whitney Houston, I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anyone else. Oh, um, yeah, Arthur Lowe in Dad's Army. You know, people that have mean, meant something in your life just because of what they do, because of the acting that they did. I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, can you ever imagine anyone else playing JR other than Larry Hagman? It, it couldn't be done, could it? I've got to say, since the new series started, right from day one um, when he was in... Do you remember the first show on, of the new series? When he was in that chair and he was in the uh, old people's home and he had a bit of... Uh, dementia or something like that i know that was like part of the show but he, he got out of that and as time's gone on and ever since he came back on i thought you don't look too well do you know what i mean i i i kind of picked up on that straight away i thought oh you really don't look well larry is it and i just put it down to an age thing but perhaps it was more than that and I also don't know if you noticed uh, those of you that watched dallas that towards the end of this first series he was in it less and less. And I kind of thought, why, why, isn't, why isn't he in this very much? You know, I know that I think they're trying to hand over to the new crew, sort of, and it'll be quite a smooth transition. And indeed, it's, it's, it's worked quite well. But I did actually think there was something wrong. I thought, oh, I wonder if he's not too well and, you know, he can't do as much as he used to do. Well, uh, they have already started filming the second series. I think they've got about five or six shows already done. And what they're going to do is write in Larry Hagman's death. Um, obviously, it'd be JR. JR's death into uh, the new second series of uh, Dallas, um, which I, I think is, is a wonderful thing to do, really. You know, I, I'm never one about people either leaving or dying TV series and replaced by another actor. That never really works for me. You've we've seen it done so many times, I think, in uh, uh, Neighbours. Uh, indeed, in Dallas as well. We remember when uh, Barbara Bel Geddes was uh, replaced by... I can't remember, a thin lady who did the job, you know, but it, it just didn't work for me. I think if someone leaves or dies, you can't replace them with another actor. It, it really just doesn't work for me. Um, and so I'm quite pleased that they're going to write in Larry Hagman's death into the new series of Dallas. Uh, it be interesting to see how they do it. I, I know I shall be in floods of tears when I watch that one. 
I really will. And no doubt the cast were as well. You never really heard about um, arguing between the Dallas um, actors and actresses, did you? Like you do on so many programmes and uh, TV shows. You hear about rowing going on in the background. You remember the two cleaning ladies here in the UK? I can't remember their names now. One had a blonde thing up here and whatever. I can't remember their names. A Annie and... Oh, God, what were they? Can't remember. Um, but apparently they absolutely hated each other. So I was told by more than one person they didn't like each other at all. But you never heard with the Dallas. It kind of came together as a, like a family-type thing. I also found out um, in one of the stories that, do you remember when Bobby Ewing left the series in the 80s? And uh, JR was really distraught and begged him to come back. Absolutely begged him to come back because he was like part of the family, wasn't he? So there we are. It remains to be seen how they deal with that um, in the new series of Dallas next year, uh, which apparently is out in America in January. I do hope that we won't have to wait until September to get it over here. Um, if that's the case, I could watch it on the Internet, I suppose, on one of those um, uh, program watching sites. There. There's a lot of them around now, so I'll probably watch it on there. But it's, not, it's never the same as watching it on your big telly downstairs, is it really? Although nowadays you can get looks at all sorts of things. They hook up to your main telly downstairs and make it like a TV, um, a, 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 like your computer hook up to that or little boxes and things that you plug into your telly it's all very complex so there we are i just wanted to say that you know i'm very very sad that uh, larry hagman has died um they think dallas will carry on can it still work i don't know i mean i think given a bit more time it could have worked but this has happened quite quickly you know after the first series and a half the main character dies um, in real life, I, I don't know. I'd like to think it can, um, but whether it will or not, I don't know. Any comments on that, please? Um, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I've got a, quite a lot of emails to read out today, so we'll get on with those. All right, uh, we started off, uh, finished off the last show with a nice long email from Marge. We got halfway through this, so I'm going to pick up from that. And Marge, uh, we were talking about uh, what you got from years ago at school. And I said to you that one of the big things while I was at school was to get a calculator. And Marge says, I didn't get a calculator for school, but I do recall wanting one for school and mistakenly being bought a scientific calculator with massive amounts of buttons I would never use in my entire life. Now, I know the one you mean because... I've got one of those, and you're quite right. The trouble is, I don't know where the damn thing is. Um, did we not look for this the other day? Let me just have a little, little look in my little drawers over here. One minute. Because it's quite big with loads and loads and loads of buttons on it. I've got a, I've got a small one. So I've got a small one, a little, little Casio sort of thing, but um, which I use most of the time. That's a so, solar-powered one. Now, let me see if I can... Find this somewhere, not in there. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay. So, I don't know if this is the one that you got, but this is a, a Casio, this was hugely popular. A Casio FX39 scientific calculator. It's all LED and it still works. This has got to be 25 years old, this calculator, I tell you that. And it's, well, I say it works. One minute. I was doing something strange in. Hang on. Should we try a, um, should we, should we try, should we try calculating some? Should, six times six equals 36. Yes, it still works. It still works. And do you remember having a calculator at school and then putting in numbers? Now, let me think. Like, and, and, and you'd turn the calculator upside down and it would make a word. One of those was hello. Now, H-E-7-7-O, is that right? Well, near enough. If, like, I've just typed in 43770 seven, and it kind of looks like hello, but not quite. <laughs> I don't know what I've done wrong there. H. Oh, no, you've got to do it backwards, haven't you? So it's O H E L L O seven O seven. 
doing this all wrong, dear. O seven seven H E L. So three and five is that right? No, that's cello. Oh, I can't do it. But you used to type in. So Hello, Katie. All right, darling. You don't come and see my listeners anymore, Katie. Katie, come on, darling. Come on, say hello. You haven't been in here for ages. Come on. I don't know why, but the cat has stopped coming in my office. Why don't you come in the office anymore? No, come up here. That's it, darling. Here she is. Look, here it is. It's Katie the cat. Katie the cat. All right, darling. Are you going to sit on my lap? No, she's off out again. She stopped coming in the office for some reason. She used to come in here all the time while I was doing bits and pieces, music stuff and all that. But she don't come anymore. No, no, no. You're going to sit out there and meow again, are you, darling? Katie? Oh, I don't know what she's doing here. We love our cats. We love our cats. Um, yeah, so I can't remember how to do that. But you used to type in numbers and then you hold the calculator up. Oh, it's a four, isn't it? It's a four, not a five. Hang on, let me try again. So, seven o dot seven seven h e three and four. Turn it upside down. That's it. That's it. Aha! And now it says hello on it. Let's see. It's you have to type in o dot seven seven three four. You turn the calculator upside down, and it says hello. <laughs> We used to sit there at school doing it. I didn't have one. I bought this myself um, oh, quite a long time ago. This, as I say, this calculator has got to be 20 years old. Easily. And it's got all these buttons on it. What? Inv. Inv. I-N-V. One over X. X. There's a little squiggly thing there. Now, what's that called? I don't know. Log 10 times in EX. Uh, God's sake. M in. M out. I don't know. And then there's a, there's a sliding switch down the side here. Which says DEG, D E D, D E G, RAD, R A D, G R A, and S D. So it's like a sliding switch on the side. Oh, I don't know what this bloody thing does. <laughs> I've never used it up for anything else other to multiply, add, or take away, or, 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 or divide. That's the only reason, that's the only thing I've ever used that for. So, did you have a scientific calculator at school? One of those Casio FX39s with all the buttons? I wonder if you can still buy these. Probably on eBay. People selling these. But you looked at this thing and you thought, what, what, what? And I still don't know what all those buttons are for. You know, when would you use those functions? Just a complete and utter waste of time. But I do remember being at school and that was the calculator that everyone had to have. And they did, and lots of rich boys in the class used to have one of those. I didn't have one of those. I can't remember what I had that year. Possibly something much more interesting, like an electric train set. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, the old Hornby electric train set. Going round and round, chugging away, chug, 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 on my mum's carpet. <laughs> um, Marge goes on to say, maths and I didn't get a well very long. No, neither did I. I think I got E. A. So A was the top. Unclassified was the bottom. It would have A, B, C, D, E. Unclassified. I got E for maths, Marge. So you and me are in the same boat there, my darling. Now, we were talking about people knocking on your door, trying to sell you stuff. And Marge says, as far as solicitors... One time I had the flu and some Jehovah's Witnesses came knocking. I was in my housecoat and pyjamas and I did have a sign on my gate in the drive reading no trespassing and no one, and another one reading beware of the dog. Row, row. Row, row, row. Oh, sorry, Katie. I'm frightened my cat now. A quick impression of a dog there. So were you able to guess which type of dog that was? Row, row, row. Row, 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 row. Row. No, any idea? No, me neither. <laughs> um, <coughs> a sign saying beware of the dog, which they totally ignored. I told them I have the flu and would they please leave? But they replied, we will only take a moment of your time, blah, blah, blah. And started rambling on to me about this and that. I said very sternly, I have the flu. They had no concern over this fact and not once even said, sorry, you're not feeling well and still wanted to leave me with some brochures and such. We do like brochures. 
I must admit, Marge, I do look through brochures, don't you? I do. Oh, it's the one. They come through the letterbox. A lot of people chuck them straight in the bin. I do like to look. I never buy anything from them. Oh, no, dear. We can't be buying stuff that we don't want, thank you very much. But I do like to have a look for a little magazine or a brochure that comes through the letterbox, completely free of charge, and at someone else's expense. That's what we like when someone else is paying. She says, finally, I had to say, well, I hate to waste your time, but I'm a Buddhist and don't really use that Bible you're carrying in my practice, which at the time I was not really a Buddhist, but it just thought it might persuade them to leave. But instead, the woman stopped talking and stared directly into my eyes with a most horrific scare, uh, stare, like if she had arrows coming out of them, she would have killed me. Oh, how frightening. March. God, oh, dear. Then she waved over at the van and four more people got out of the van, walking towards the house. I thought maybe I needed to call the police now, but instead reached around behind me to the door and got a hold of my Doberman pincher and brought her around to the opening in the door where she could see her. I said to the lady, ma'am, my dog is getting very upset right now. And with me being so sick and all, I don't think I could hold her very well if she decides to come out of this door. That I might not have got the American accent quite right there, Marge, and I do apologise if I didn't, OK? But I did try. You know, it's all about having a go. Some people find me very trying, Marge, to be honest, Marge. So with that, she turned around real fast and the four others ran back and got in the van, and they all left. <laughs> Talk about persistence. <clears throat> I hoped to myself I'd given her the flu, but then thought better of it. My dog was not attack trained, and probably would have licked them to death, but I was not about to tell him that. Of course, Dobermans are very protective if they've gotten out of hand. Oh, oh I think it's a lovely thing. I mean, I don't, I don't think my cat would be the same, to be honest, Marge. She, she would tend to run the other way and just watch me being, you know, um, uh, kept bludgeoned to death at the door and then she'd come over and probably you know try and eat me or something like that cats are not very loyal I'm afraid are they Marge wants to know do you think Justin Bieber is secretly gay he really looks it or am I being judgmental I'm a newly convert to be to appreciating gay and lesbian people and don't want to offend anyone can someone really look gay or lesbian, and does it really matter? I mean, I don't go around saying mine straight, and it's no woman's business but mine. Um, and she says, OK, what is a gay man anyway? I mean, what are the requirements in look for being gay? I mean, I just love the hunk John Barrowman, but to me does not look gay, but then Justin Bieber does. Or Bieber, Bieber, whatever his name is. Uh, the singer David Bowie looks and acts gay to me. I don't know if he is or not. I see a gay man and I think a woman's spirit in a man's body. But then I'm still trying to figure that one out. OK, um, Justin Bieber, yes, indeed, he does look gay. But this is the thing, Marge. I have found that a lot of the straight young boys look very gay. But they're not. You know, they, they I, don't, I can't explain it. A certain dress sense, looking very, very um, uh, uh, groomed and, and nice clothes and hair done and, and all this. Maybe even a bit of makeup. And they're not gay. Um, I don't think Justin Bieber is gay. I, I really don't. Um, what does it mean? What... OK, what is gay man anyways? I mean, what are the requirements to look for being gay? Well, there are no requirements. Most people don't. I mean, I don't go. Uh, a lot of them is all fashionable and all this, you know, fashion, fashion, spending a lot of money on clothes. I actually don't fit too well into that category. In fact, I don't really fit into many things very well. I kind of stick out a little bit like a sore thumb some of the time. And it goes with everything, you know. I'm, I'm a kind of bit here, and I'm a bit there, and a bit, bit, bit there, and a bit there. I don't really belong to any group. I, I, I've never, I've never felt that way anyway. For example, um, the whole gay thing. I have no fashion sense at all. Okay, I could not decorate a house and this. Sorry, forget the painting and all that. I couldn't come into a house and say, right, I know those colour walls and that I go with that. If you came round to my house, Marge, nothing matches. 
Okay, I have no idea. I have absolutely no fashion sense at all, which many, many people will tell you, tell you, including my best friend. He makes he doesn't have a problem at all telling me that, you know, why are you wearing that with that? And it doesn't you see, it doesn't bother me. To me, it's a shirt and a pair of trousers. That's it. I couldn't care less what it looks like. But to I mean, I was going to say a proper gay person, but you can't really say that because I'm one. Um. To, to many gay people, that's just, like, totally not on to, to actually look mismatched and all that and not, not spend loads of money and what have you on decent clothes and what have you. Um, so I've never really felt I fitted into the whole gay thing. Uh, what else? I don't know. Um, the, 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 the swimming thing... The, the going don't going swimming and to the Virgin Active place, which I haven't been for, for nearly two weeks now. I can't go there and feed his cats at the same time because he's still away on holiday. Uh, I can, just can't do everything at the same time, so that had to be wait. But um, there are people walking in there, you know, all designer track suits and that, and they go and do their gym bit. And professional swimmers going up and down, and there I am. I just go in, I do my little thing. I don't really kind of fit into the sports centre, but I do my thing, and then I come out again. You know. See what I mean? And I don't, I don't really feel I, I fit into anything, like totally and utterly. Catholic Church, I go to church on a Sunday. I do prayers and all that. Um, I do feel part of it, but I don't quite fit in there. Um, I think. You know, I go. You know, no one says you don't, you know, don't have, there's no problem or anything like that. But I just don't, don't feel I fit in. So the whole, what does a gay man thing? I just, I just fancy blokes. That's it, really. And that is the only part of the whole gay thing that I'm kind of attached to. I just fancy blokes. That's it. I don't fancy girls. I just fancy blokes. That's it. Um, I'm just trying to think else. What else, you know? Uh, any other examples of that that I can think of? I don't know. Oh, the the, the whole landlord thing. You know, I, I'm I'm a landlord as well. I've got a, uh, properties that I let out to people. And when I go to the estate agent who looks after it, I just turn up. I've got a pair of old tracksuit bottoms on and a T-shirt and I walk in. You know, and you get these other landlords. They come in and there. They've got suits on and all the rest of it. And not me. I don't. I don't fit into a lot. See what I mean? You understand what I mean, Marge? <coughs> I am kind of a combination of a bit, bit of lots of different things. That's that's me. And um, some people find that very hard to accept. That certainly. And if you just take two items there, the Catholic bit and the gay bit, put them together, you've got me. Now. The gay people just don't get it. And they're constantly saying, oh, how can you do that when they say this, when they say that? Indeed, yeah, a couple of times you've said to me, Marge, I don't understand how you can be a member of the Catholic Church when they that said and that said. Well, I am and that's it. You know, I don't have an explanation. That's how I am. You see what I mean? Similarly, uh, on, on another scale, however, it doesn't work the other way. Whereas gay people have said this to me before, and it comes up quite often. Now and again, I might put a post, uh, you know, when I'm on the, the Facebook thing, and I check into places. I might check in to St. Joseph's Catholic Church in, in Bracknell, where I live. And I'll check in, and then when I come back home, someone has made some smart ass remark on the Facebook and there was one particular one who says, I've just seen that picture of the church. I'm feeling physically sick. And they, they all automatically, and they start going on about all priests being paedophiles and all that business, which is just a bloody lie. You know, not possible for all priests to be paed. What a ridiculous thing to say. That saying, like, all gay people are something else. You know, we've had that one in the papers before. You know, so why why do and you know I get quite upset with that, and I usually end up deleting them from from the friends list because I don't need to be um, judged like that. I am this person, 
combination of lots of different things. But on the other side of the coin, Catholic people who I know, who know I'm a gay, have never, ever mentioned that perhaps I shouldn't be. It doesn't work that way. All you get that way is, is kind of acceptance and love, really. But it's, it's the, the gay to Catholic thing that, that seems to be a problem for, for many gay people. And I, I just don't, I just walk off in the end when they start like that. I get on my bloody nerves, to be honest. So, what does it mean to be gay? Um, there's, there's lots of different things, really. But the only part of it I kind of attach to is the fact that I, I fancy blokes. I don't do the fashion. I don't really go out to clubs. I used to go out to clubs. Yeah, I used to. Not anymore. Don't do the whole fashion thing. <laughs> don't really have a clue how my house should be decorated or anything like that. <laughs> um, and uh, you love John Barrymore. Uh, I'm not keen on him at all. He's a bit, little bit too much. Um, it's all... I don't know. There's something about him I, I really dislike. It's me, me, me all the time, isn't it? Um, so there we are. Um... Marge goes on to say, today this old man started asking me, are you married yet? And it wasn't even needed in a conversation we were talking about. Like, I don't think it's any of their business. <coughs> he asked me that every time, uh, every time I see him. I get irritated when people start on my personal life. Oh, Marge, do you know the amount of times someone comes up to me? Oh, yes. oh, are you with anyone at the moment? No. Oh, I can't understand it. Don't worry, Chris. There's someone for everyone. I don't. I no longer believe that. I absolutely no longer believe that. I think some of us, including me, are destined to be on our own. And we have to bloody well make the best of it that we can. We really do. You know, and I think... Perhaps, from my point of view, I think once you've started thinking like it, then then that 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 even that closes the door even more firmly on anyone trying to get in. I think anyone who who, who might <laughs> who who might possibly be interested in me would have a bloody hard time getting in now. Do you know what I mean? Long time. I've, I've been hurt a few times myself. I'm sure lots, everyone else listening or watching this program has been hurt many times. But um, on a couple of occasions, uh, it's, it's, it's a long time ago now. To be honest, in my 20s and 30s, that's when I got hurt. In my 20s and 30s. Not at all in my 40s. Haven't been hurt in my 40s because I just won't let anyone in. I don't want that pain again. So the door closed. I wouldn't let anyone in anymore. And I was badly hurt in my 20s and 30s by a few people, actually. I feel that's just the way it is. Similarly, I'm sure that I probably hurt other people. But I think you, you close the door. You close the door. And then people come up, and it does annoy me. It really annoys me when people go on and on. Oh, you're going on holiday to whatever, you remember. Oh, America, you're going to... Oh, you're going to meet someone there. I know you. No, I'm not going to meet anyone there. Don't go on about it because it pisses me off. Something chronic. It really does. When they start going on like that. You're going to meet someone. Oh, do me a favour. So one thing my mum got wrong. She was right about absolutely everything except your, quote, you are meet someone. Nanny, you are meet someone. My sister, you are meet someone. No, I won't. It's not for everyone. Not everyone. There isn't someone for everyone in this world. Billions and billions of people. And yet, there is not someone for everyone in this world. And for those of you, anyone listening or watching the show, I do hope you find someone. Because it's nice to, to be with someone. It really is. You know, for the short periods of time that I was ever with various people. You know, it's nice. It is nice. On the other hand, um, I think today people just aren't with people for a long time. Now, that does have a few benefits. I can do whatever I want to do any time of the day or night. I can eat when I want. Go out when I want. Go to sleep when I want. I can do anything if I'm too cold, turn the heating on. If I'm too hot, turn the heating off. I can do anything that I want to do. Anything. 
It's almost, it's, it's, it's probably a selfish, very selfish attitude that perhaps, is it? Do you think it's selfish? I think it probably is quite selfish. I can go on holiday on my own. People, I've been on holiday with people, and it's been a total disaster. Because they want to do one thing, you want to do something else. And um, I, I, I don't really want to go on holiday with anyone. I usually go on my own. Which in itself is, 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 can be a bit lonely, yes. But, you know, sometimes rather that than putting up with someone bloody moaning all the time, wanting to do something else or whatever. What are the other benefits? Is, if you've been on your own a long time, you never really had a long-term relationship. I don't think I've ever really had a long-term relationship. I classed long-term was over five years, okay? I think the most I got to was about three and a half. That would have been with my ex-wife. Um, people in who get married, who have a partner for... A long, long time. Examples in my family. My mother and my father. Together from an early age until my dad died. And my aunt, Auntie Brenda, and my uncle, Malcolm. Together from a young age until he died. Can you just imagine that? Being with someone for so long. And then they're gone. And I think that, as well, is an advantage to being on your own. Yes, I do get lonely. I do, all the time. I get lonely. But it cannot possibly compare to the loneliness that someone would get after a partner of so many decades is suddenly gone and taken away. That must be horrific. I know my mum only lasted another four years after my dad died. She had a totally broken heart. Nothing could have fixed her heart. And I do worry about my aunt as well. My aunt was my mum's sister. Uh, her husband died two years ago. I think it's two and a half, two years, two and a half years ago. Uncle Malcolm. And her son, you know, he has his own life and what have you. Uh, her other son died some years before um, Malcolm died. He um, he had uh, Crohn's disease and he had to keep, I think he had to keep going in hospital and having a bit cut out and then he'd go back again. And he died in the end, he, he decided he didn't want any more operations. And so they started giving him steroids. His name was Cousin Michael. He was very clever actually, he was a... University in Sydney in Australia and uh, he died due to the steroids apparently he had a brain hemorrhage and to have your son taken away probably is the worst thing you know your child uh, and then to have your husband taken away later on how lonely must you be she doesn't even live somewhere where there's lots of people around she lives in this beautiful little bungalow in the middle of nowhere. No one even walks past her front door. She sees no one all day long. I ring her, I try and make sure I ring her every night. Sometimes I haven't got anything to say and I'm like, oh, what am I going to say to her tonight? But I still make the phone call and I leave it to her and she strikes up a conversation. And uh, I kind of just listen sometimes, you know. But there's an advantage to being on your own. I will never, never experience the terrible, terrible loneliness that probably my auntie is going through now. The same as my mother went through. So there are a couple of advantages to being on your own. But then again, perhaps to have someone for so many years, that period of time in one's life must be absolutely amazing. Your thoughts on that, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Back to this email from Marge, and then I think we'll uh, we'll probably finish off then. Um, 
he asks me every time I see him. This is the bloke says, are you married to Marge? I don't like it when someone asks my religion or if I'm married yet. Well, not in the way the old man was doing it. Or what politically party or what political party I'm voting for. I say none of your business. OK, well, till next time. Thank you, Marge. For that email. And Marge also writes, uh, Chris, the top clock I was talking about was the one you held up for the people to see. It had temperature and such was the one on the kitchen wall. On the, <coughs> Another little comment on one of the um, videos there. Um, I was just going to say, uh, sometimes people put comments on the... Uh, those of you that watch the YouTube video of the show, sometimes I do. I, I notice you put comments, but I miss those. Some uh, quite often I miss those comments. So please, if you're going to send anything in, please use the email address, my darlings. All right, Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. I did pull off one comment here from John Golding, who's back with us. Hello, John. How are you, sir? You disappeared for a while. Who said good to see you, Chris? Hello, John. Nice to see you as well, my sir. All right. I'm going to disappear now, boys and girls. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Uh, in the next show, I've got uh, an email here uh, waiting from Jonathan uh, Tustain. Hello, Jonathan. It's been a long time. Hello, Jonathan. And also uh, one from Stella as well, who's been a, a little bit quiet on the emails recently, young Stella. Haven't you, my darling? They'll be coming up in the next show, as well as an, a lo a lo another load of rubbish. Oh, is there another one here as well? No, that's it. As long as, as long as well as another load of old rubbish I'm going to be talking about, OK? Being Wednesday today, uh, if you're in the South London area, I'm hosting karaoke at Belushi's in Borough High Street, uh, London. OK, Belushi's Borough High Street in London. Karaoke tonight, Wednesday night between 10pm and 2am. Uh, it's free entry before... Oh... Before nine o'clock, OK, free entry before nine o'clock, uh, say, so you want to get there about 22 nine, really. Free entry before 20 to nine, but you will need a little photo ID. My email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Join me on my Facebook as well, if you like. I've just uploaded an awful lot of photographs. All my photo albums and everything are up there on Facebook now. If you want to have a look at those, uh, my Facebook username is facebook.com forward slash chrisreardon UK. Have a nice couple of days. I'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.